Hey, what's up everybody? BDL44 coming at you with another video. Alright, so you want a news flash? Kyrie never requested a trade from Brooklyn. Guess what? That has literally been something we've been saying the entire time. That is common knowledge. That is not news. That is not something that we should be wondering about or considering or thinking. Is was there a chance he could have or no, there was no speculation of the thought at all. So why is that being reported to us today? These are the things that I wonder when listening to reports as they come out, because I honestly don't know what they are thinking in regards to providing certain information officially. <clears throat> it's like that's, that's been understood the entire time. Um, he opted in. It was KD who had requested the trade. We understand that the Nets don't have any interest in Kyrie Irving, which is why he's looking elsewhere. That's the understanding. If they had interest in keeping Kyrie Irving, they know what they need to do to do that, which is to offer him a long-term contract without the contingencies uh, attached. So at this point, that's not on the table. So it's clear that he's a free agent more or less and he, he opted in and so now he's a net that's pretty much the end of it <laughs> now what we understand is that the nets their front office is in a situation where they don't want to bring back Kyrie and KD does not want to come back to them so at this point that is why it has been reported that they are wheeling and dealing and trying to figure out a way to acquiesce to KD's trade request and simultaneously uh, part ways with Kyrie Irving's contract. That is the clear news and understanding. That's not even news. That's the clear understanding that we've had the entire time. So at this point, I just have to assume that they're just basically trying to sway the public one way or another into feeling anxious about this trade not taking place as if it needed any extra energy in regards to that. I don't think it does. And I think most of us are pretty much clear what's going on, which is negotiations behind the scenes that do take time. You know, it's not something that happens overnight. I do believe that uh, the trades will get done I don't know when, as I've speculated, anywhere between this week and the start of the season. But I do believe at some point Brooklyn will make a move to uh, to try to rebuild their entire team around Ben Simmons. That's, that's what I think is coming for them. But um, it's been reports also that Donovan Mitchell has um, been... Well, the Utah Jazz have been fielding calls for Donovan Mitchell and that they may be interested in a swap for Ben Simmons themselves which if those rumors are true wouldn't be all that bad considering that I truly believe Ben Simmons needs a team of his own to build around um, or rather to build around him and they would then have to bring him certain types of players in order to make it work so if that's not in Brooklyn Utah a completely rebuilding situation especially if Donovan Mitchell is out uh, becomes a blank canvas for f which that can take place. And while the locale may not necessarily be favorable to Ben Simmons, you're landing in Danny Ainge and, you know, the care of uh, Dwayne Wade. And I think they got a good thing going with Utah, and I do believe that's just as good as any spot to uh, start the process of uh, making Ben Simmons into the player that he's ultimately going to be. Uh, I don't think he should reject that notion at all. I think he should embrace Salt Lake City. Uh, it's a little cold. I've never been there personally, but I think what he needs is his own team. He really needs that because he's not a player that's just going to pick and plug in most situations. So, with that being said, if that is a possibility, and if the Utah Jazz would be willing to maybe do something like that, which I think they should consider if they don't want to keep Donovan Mitchell. Now, you know, I made a video earlier saying for Donovan Mitchell's point of view, I think he should choose to stay with the Jazz, but that's not 
within his control, obviously, if Utah is going to rebuild. Now, if they're rebuilding, <clears throat> the question is, would you rather rebuild with Donovan Mitchell or Ben Simmons? Well, if I'm Utah, if I'm parting ways with Donovan Mitchell, bringing in Ben Simmons may not be a bad player to start with, uh, given the fact that he can do some things defensively and in terms of continuity uh, that would ultimately make whatever it is I'm bringing to the table better if I build it properly. So given Danny Ainge's uh, history with defense and ultimately his ability to bring assets to the Utah Jazz, I ultimately think the sky's the limit if he does choose to build around Ben Simmons. So that's really what it comes down to. For me personally, I, I don't really know. You know, I'd have to see more Donovan Mitchell um, to really assess whether or not I choose him over Ben Simmons. I actually think they're kind of along the same lane. Um, so it's 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 a little it's a little iffy for me. But I do know that Donovan Mitchell doesn't uh, have any issues spreading the floor, and so that is a plus in my mind. But uh, I do respect what Ben Simmons comes brings to the table, and I think. He is a player that uh, you build around and, and can and can do something monstrous if you build properly. So, uh, yeah, that's just a thought. That's something that, that that's just been floating around as a rumor. I don't know if that it holds any validity, but it would solve a problem for the Brooklyn Nets, uh, obviously, given that they can't seem to make certain trades because of the presence of Ben Simmons' contract. So if they can somehow part ways with that, effectively sending him somewhere that's good for him, which Utah would be, then they can bring the U uh, the the Heat to back to the table, make a trade that involves Bam out of bio, and get KD to Miami, or maybe even expand the trade um, list and see what other teams would be able to get in the mix. I know John Morant has been rumored to want KD real bad. If that situation were to take place, I believe they would be able to make a trade of some sort that would allow him to uh, land in Memphis. I don't know if there would be any restrictions at all, given the circumstances, but that's some, a team to look at who has assets. And there are others as well who may make a play for Katie, including Phoenix, of course, as a team who wants him. So, um, you know, once Ben Simmons is out of Brooklyn, you can see some some opportunities open up that may not be there right now. So I don't know if uh, if Brooklyn's up for that. I don't know if Utah would be up for that, but <clears throat> it is a solution for Brooklyn's problems. So that is something I'm definitely considering in all of this and, and looking at how that has any relation to Kyrie Irving and, and what his situation is. Well, then I think the domino effect would automatically be for them to trigger a trade for Kyrie Irving to go to the Lakers um, at that point. Now, the possibility of them trying to throw Kyrie into a trade with Kevin Durant is real. And I've already prepared everybody for the possibility of that because it just could happen. Now, I know they say most teams don't want Kyrie in a one-year deal at $36 million. Bringing him on would be a disaster if he were to decide to sit. But if you were to trade him with KD, they may actually choose to play with one another to play know where they land. And some of these teams may have to give up more than what they want to to land KD. So it might as well make sense for them to bring in a talent like Kyrie to replace what it is that they're going to be sending out. And that makes a lot of sense to me. So it's probably going to make a lot of sense to other GMs as they consider what it is they're doing. So that is something the Lakers should consider. They really should consider that because even though I don't know that others are, it is there. And unfortunately, my mind has allowed me to say it. <laughs> so that is something that I believe the Lakers should consider and other teams should as well. Because at the end of the day, when I look at Kyrie Irving, I've watched his highlights and I'm telling you, it's about 29 teams that are idiots out there right now. And I'm just being completely and utterly honest with you. I know what he's done or hasn't done. But watching him play basketball, you all are fools for not wanting this individual on your team. <laughs> and I'm just saying that, and I'll stand on that. <laughs> it's the truth. Defensively, I know he's not that player. But offensively, his talent, I don't think there are 10 people better. I honestly don't. <laughs> just from a talent standpoint, they might not be 10 people better than this dude. 
And so we need to be really honest about that. Because <laughs> if if some of these players like Giannis, they had the type of dribble package and the skills that this dude had, there would be nothing stopping him from winning championships each and every year. <laughs> be nothing stopping him. And so that's what we need to respect about his his gift. And I, it needed to be said. So while I, I want him on my team, I think that the fact that other teams don't want him is a misevaluation of his talent. In the presence of all of this nonsense that, that is attached to his name, it's still under-evaluating his talent. And of course, the same will be said about KD as well. But I think that that... His, his situation is a bit more layered because I don't think anyone doesn't want KD. I think it, it's just the presence of the market being impossible to move him uh, responsibly for most teams. But if if any of these teams could bring him in, uh, they would and they would max him out. And I think he knows that. It's just a matter of what they'd have to give up in trade, which is why it's difficult to do. So is he worth four years, a trillion dollars to most teams? Yeah, obviously. Will they give up $400 million worth of what they have to acquire him? No. It's a different conversation. And that is the problem. And I think that that's what everybody's starting to understand. So it's about risk. It's about risk and it's about belief. And it's about preparation for the field. And uh, you just got to respect it. So that's my perspective. That's what I see there. I, I, I do believe Katie will eventually get moved. But I wonder... If the solution is to attach him, Kyrie, to the situation, not necessarily for Brooklyn, but for the team receiving him, KD, you know, just because I'm telling you, you, Brooklyn is about to ask for the world. And whatever team that's going to do this is going to have to give it up, you know, and and there's not going to be a lot left for him to win with if you do that. That's the bottom line. That is the bottom line. If Miami makes the move, Bam out of bio ain't going to be enough. And if they're bringing Bam out of bio in, guess what? They're going to want to be a win now team. And see, that's what people understand about Brooklyn. Now it shifts back to understanding what their interest is. Yes, KD has to be left with a good team, but so does Brooklyn, unfortunately. If you're the other team that's trying to trade for KD, so. Yeah, what you're sending out is going to be substantial. And um, how do you supplement that? I, I I know the answer. So if I'm the Lakers, I'm probably going to trade for Kyrie now. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just going to I'm going to do that. I'm going to I'm going to see if I can seal that deal if it isn't already sealed. Based on that notion. But the same time if these owners are truly that afraid of these two players then not only will not will they not take a chance on Kyrie but they probably won't want to take a chance on KD in that same vein and so this is you know it's more so about what they view in regards to the players coming in in the locker room Um, in this case for a lot of owners and for a lot of GMs I think they're worried about the risk that that may have on their core that they'll have remaining because once you trade for KD you likely trade away most assets that allow you an opportunity to effectively get value for whatever else you have too you know and that's that's something I understand you you have picks and, and different trade exceptions and things like that that help you out that get you out of those situations in case one of your stars get angry you can attach these things to these stars and get them out of there or attach, you know, do different things that, that allow you to maneuver. But once you get rid of those things, no. Now you just have these unhappy people that are likely going to walk for nothing. And that leaves you at a really, really dis- disadvantaged position to have your team bad for a long time. So that's also, like I said, risk versus reward. You know, they're considering these things. Can I make these players happy? Most of these teams don't know if they can make Kyrie happy. Most of these teams are not sure if KD's going to be happy with them for four years. And so that's that's ultimately where, why also um, the apprehension, I think, is, 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 is there. So, you know, I mean, it is what it is, man. The summer, summertime provides this type of suspense. It's all a perfect storm for the NBA. Uh, 
I like the changes that the NBA have made. Just to segue into a different thing, the, 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 the changes that they made in terms of the foul call and the breakaway. Uh, it, it's going to be a, a, a welcome addition to the NBA. Removing the ability to just foul teams as they're running out on the fast break. I, I love the idea of just allowing for us to see more highlights. I think having players pull up in mid-stride can allow for types of in injuries and things. Uh, you just don't want that for the game. You're taking the best aspect of the game out of it. When you have LeBron James and Giannis and, and all these fantastic players in the open court and somebody just fouls them and, and you know keeps us from seeing that highlight. I, I, I do believe this was the right call. Jeff Van Gundy gets a lot of credit, as ESPN mentioned, uh, for advocating for this all year long. And uh, I'm glad the rule is in place. Also, of course, we're talking about the play-in tournament, as I mentioned earlier today. Happy about that. Also, uh, they're talking about an in-season tournament. And I'm not quite sure about that. But I do lend the NBA the benefit of the doubt because I've liked the changes they've made to the All-Star game and various things that they've tried have worked, including the playing tournament. So, yeah, I'll give them a chance with the mid-season tournament. But if it is a fail, uh, I will be looking for them to remove it. You know, as Kendrick Perkins said, you don't want to start doing too much. Yeah, you can experiment a little bit, but let's slow it down and let's remember what it is we're trying to do here. Um, I think keeping players healthy is most important. So if a mid-season play in tournament does that, I'm all for it. But if you add an extra basketball to these players, uh, I do not believe that's the best way to go. So uh, condensing the season while making it suspenseful and continuing to keep the competitive edge in place, I think is a great goal. And uh, if that's what the mid-season tournament can do, I'm all for it. So, that is what I got to say, man. That is pretty much my night NBA conversation. Uh, I'm going to get some sleep, of course. I thank you all for watching BDL44. Wow.